Next question is from the Grumpy Yeti. The front squat is now often regarded as more functional than the back squat. It doesn't allow for as great of overload, but it allows for a greater range of motion and is more quad focused and core and upper back demanding. Plus, if you deadlift, the hamstring and glute emphasis is already there. Should the front squat take the pedestal from the back squat? I, I, you know, mm. no, 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 I don't think so. I mean, could it for someone? I guess, sure, but I don't think so. This, the idea that oh, this exercise works those muscles, therefore, we don't need to do this other exercise. I can see the rationale there, but again, when you build strength, there's a lot of specificity to how that strength is applied. So if I deadlift a lot, yeah, I'm working my glutes and hamstrings quite a bit. Am I developing squat strength by doing that? You're developing some squat strength, but not a lot of back squat strength. Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I would argue that we're already very much uh, anterior, anterior. Uh, driven. Like it's, it's, there's like in excess, like everything is anterior driven. And so the opportunity to present more exercises that address the posterior chain are invaluable because we just don't we we don't focus on that and a mm. back squat is essential for that uh, yes the, the the deadlift covers that as well you want more exercises to specifically cover uh you, you know that that portion you, you need that support system to be in balance so that way you're not overly dominant with your with your quads which most clients i've had especially athletes are quad dominant well this is just another thing that highlights why i, I get annoyed by our space so much too it's like the truth is they both belong there and there's and there's nothing wrong with maybe for a while you're focused heavily on the front front squat and there is no back squats you know there's many times in my training where i go months and i don't back squat because i'm focusing on my front squat for a while or i'm doing something or I'm lunging doing unilateral sal just came off of this recently mm -hmm. i believe right you eliminated i didn't back. squat for for almost three months right so mm -hmm. there's there's nothing wrong with that but when when camps try and make cases for this is more functional and this is better and there's no need to do this or it's like the yeah. the truth is why would you not do both they they both have tremendous benefits um and you can probably have one in each camp argue why one's more the truth is have them both like why why subject yourself to saying that oh i'm only going to do this or it should take the front stage opposed to another mm -hmm. movement it's like no they're both i mean if you look at our programming there's always front squats and back squats incorporated because that we see the tremendous value in both of them and mm -hmm. justin's right i think we are extremely anterior driven but this person's very right too you get deeper in the squat you have to have better shoulder mobility to do it so there are some great benefits to becoming a good front oh, it's a great exercise right but yeah. uh, like to your point we don't do enough posterior chain work so mm -hmm. you know why why not have both included in there because they both are so functional and yeah so great. now now the, the whole functional argument sometimes annoys the shit out of me too because people become very narrow with their focus so front squat maybe it's more functional from this standpoint if you're likely to squat with weight in the real world it's probably going to be something you're holding in front of you yes a lot of people can go lower in a front squat in fact I would more often than not be able to get a everyday client to be able to do a good front squat before I could get them to do a back squat. So oftentimes when I'm training someone and we're in the beginning stages of training, they're front squatting way more uh, than they're, they're more often than they're back squatting. Just to just your your form is it's easier to get somebody in a, in a better position. Okay. That being said, there's also this the the amount of strength that you gain sometimes washes out some of these factors. So. If I take a back squat, I can squat more with the back squat than I can with the front squat. And my gains in the back squat, once I do it right, tend to go up really fast, faster than a front squat, a little bit faster than a front squat. So if I'm able to squat back squat 400 pounds, but only able to front squat 250 pounds, the front squat might edge it in functionality in terms of movement, because, but because of the overall strength gains I get from the back squat, it still wins. Now, I'm not saying... I'm not making the argument that one is better than the other. It really depends on the individual. But my argument is you got to look at the whole thing. You can't just look at, 
oh, the function. Because then you get into the craziness, like, well, you know, we should do everything split stance since we walk that way. Right. And let's do everything on well, one leg. Well, that's the truth, and, though. If you're going to make the functional argument, then I would argue back to yeah. you that, well, okay, well, a goblet, split squats. a goblet squat or a walking lunge is more functional. Right. Because, or, or even a zerger squat is more functional. Because or when are you ever going to rack something on the front of your shoulders with mm -hmm. your elbows present? I don't ever carry anything like that. I carry it more like a zercher squat or like mm -hmm. a goblet squat if I carry something. So, yeah, yeah the, the default to the this is more functional than that, the, all that does is it, it appeases all of us nerds that are really into fitness and it loses all the general population that really need the good advice. And the fucking advice for 99% of the population, you need both in your life.